Hello and welcome back. This time I'm going to be showing you, at least in my opinion, one of the coolest features to have come out in the more recent versions of Sibelius, and that is the ability to have more control over our staff sizes. In fact, we now have so much control that we can change our staff sizes from instrument to instrument and even page to page. To show you this, I'll just first select a staff and then open up the inspector window. The hotkey for the inspector window is Control shift i and down the bottom, under bars, you'll see that we can control our staff size. And dropping down the list of options, we can then choose to have either a normal staff size, medium, small, or extra small. And I'm just going to go with small for the moment. And you can see that the entire system that was selected is now significantly smaller, but just for that particular system. And on the following system, it all returns to its normal size again, and on the following page as well. And this small staff size that I've just chosen is actually the same size that Ossia staffs use, which is good to know. Now, I don't necessarily have to use the sizes that are all listed here. In fact, I can actually customize these sizes if I wish to in engraving rules. The hotkey, of course, for engraving rules is Control shift e And when I open that up and then go to Starves, I will see the option to change the individual staff sizes. And as you can see, I can change their sizes either in millimeters here, or I can change their relative size. For example, if I want my small staff to be exactly half of my normal size. Now, there is one restriction, and that is that a smaller sized staff can't be bigger than the bigger staffs. For example, if I try to make my small sized staff bigger than my medium sized staff, then my medium sized staff is bumped up in size to meet the size of the smaller staff, and of course, vice versa. If I try to make my medium staff smaller than my small staff, then the small staff gets reduced in size with it. But apart from that, everything is quite flexible. Now, there are many practical applications for being able to have this flexibility with staff sizes, and I'd like to show you a couple just now. So one of the most practical applications of this is for when you simply run out of room, either on a staff or on a page. For example, when you're typing up orchestral music, sometimes you'll have just one or two pages that are just so full, that just have so many instruments playing at once that you just can't squash everything vertically onto the page without having objects clashing into one another. But of course, if I were to reduce the staff size for the entire score, just so that I can fit everything in just on those couple of pages, I'll be making everything smaller and thus harder to read, and I'll probably end up with other spacing problems elsewhere in the score anyway. So with this feature, we can just select everything on our questionable page and in the inspector window, reduce the staff sizes for that page only. And of course, we don't want to reduce the staff size too much because it'll just look really weird. We want to reduce the staff size just enough so that we can fit everything on the page. But please keep in mind that this should be just for particularly tricky and sticky situations. If you're having to use this all of the time throughout your score, well, you should probably readjust your score staff size. A similar circumstance is when you run out of room horizontally on a single staff, like in the example I have open here. Sometimes you'll simply have so much information on the staff that it doesn't really fit across the system horizontally and contains clashes. Similar to before, we can reduce the staff size, but as before, you'll probably want to tweak and check everything in the engraving rules so that the final staff size that you select is just small enough to fit the material onto the staff. Because of course, if you make the staff size drastically smaller, it's going to get confusing for the player and it'll just look really weird in the finished product. So the last practical application of flexible staff sizes is for creating instrumental parts for chamber music. For example, here I have a piece for piano trio, and this of course would be the score, but let's say that the piece is quite difficult and that you want to include the other instruments in the individual parts. For example, if I wanted the violinist to be able to see what the cellist was playing and vice versa. In the parts tab, I'd first click new part and then make a new part out of both violin and cello, so a combined part. I would then select all of the staffs for one of those instruments. I'm going to choose the violin, open up the inspector, reduce the staff size for that instrument. 
And then this particular part would become my cello part. So the cellist can now read what the violinist is also doing, but the violin part isn't too dominating. And of course, I could also do the same for the piano part. But for this particular case, uh, I probably wouldn't make an extra piano part. Rather, I would just make a copy of this document and transform the score into the piano part by simply selecting the top two voices, opening inspector, reducing their staff sizes, and that's pretty much it. This way, all of the instrumentalists know what the others are doing, but hopefully they're not too distracted by the additional staves. And as I said before, you probably only need to do this when the music is really complicated and communication in the ensemble is a bit of a challenge. So there you have it. That's a brief overview of some of the potential of having flexible staff sizes at your disposal. And I'll catch you in the next lesson.